Tyler Rose Festival trip was full of surprises. He really had no idea what to expect. Our tour guide, Angie, was fun and funny and kept things pretty lively on the bus. The hotel provided snacks when we got there. Our room was adequate, but the bathroom was way too tiny. A woman from the Rose Garden boarded the bus and welcomed us. We were given a cut rose and also a potted rose to take home. When we first entered the large brick building that was part of the Rose Garden, we found huge mannequins covered with real flowers. We had a lot of fun posing with them. While Marilyn went to the museum inside the brick building, I walked around the entire rose garden and really enjoyed it. It was a lovely day. In a far corner was the Idea Garden, a small area maintained by the Master Gardeners of Tyler. That was my favorite part.
gave a hint of what was to come. It had dresses and trains worn by former Rose Queens, along with many of their crowns. Then it was back on the bus and off to the Goodman Legrand house. This house is in the condition it was in when the last owner resided there. So it had original furnishings and all the fixtures. It was quite interesting. Our guide was quite knowledgeable, and she told us how one of the daughters of the house was quite a beauty, and had been what was probably the original Rose Queen, even before the festival became official. She had the stairway revamped so she could make her entrance, and didn't care that it blocked a doorway. This was our group portrait after the tour was over. The festival paid tribute to Wynn Morton, who has designed the costumes and sets since 1982. He is retiring this year. When Amelia Earhart lifted her arms to display wings, wow! It about brought down the house. Queen Hannah Clare of the House of Waits. Hannah Claire Waits gown and train ensemble was the highlight of the ceremony. Her 16 foot long train was made of navy velvet, royal blue lame, emerald green satin, velvet and brocade in shades of blue and gold. The train was covered with crystals, rhinestones and Swarovski beads. A jewel encrusted collar framed Waits head. She wore a towering crown which Morton earlier said was the largest ever created for a rose queen and carried a golden scepter. Okay. 
All the young women who preceded the queen had executed bows that ranged from a curtsy to a nod to lowering all the way until their chins were just inches from the stage. We were all in shock when Queen Hannah Clare executed the most difficult bow in her costume that weighed a hundred pounds. got a little inside information on the festival from a guy who'd been involved for years. The dinner was fun, but the food, well, it was okay. In the same building was a huge shopping area, all full of Christmas stuff. We decided it was like a Cracker Barrel on steroids. like it might rain, but it never did. It was nice and cool in the stadium, so that was a good thing. The parade was a lot of fun, though it did get a little strung out toward the end.
like half the town of Tyler was in the parade. From the Shriners to the Cub Scouts to the Red Hats, it just went on and on. Marilyn said that she'd noticed a lot of spirit in the Tyler natives. But if you put half the town in the parade, maybe that accounted for it. the grand finale was the Queen's float with her young courtiers on board. That was the end of the parade. And in an effort to get the queen to the tea in time, she was rushed off the float. Just think, one minute you're the queen of the world, the next minute you're in a jeep. A large central area of the Rose Garden had been set up with white tents and the Queen's train was on display. enjoyed seeing all the dresses of the inspirational women being portrayed up close and personal. The weather was absolutely perfect.
Lots of people wanted themselves or their children photographed with the various women, and who could blame them? help myself. I just had to say, I saw it in the window and I just had to have it. She laughed, although I'm sure she'd heard it many times already. Georgia O'Keeffe dress that opened to make a full flower was our favorite. This Amelia Earhart costume was the most inventive, of course. And Beatrix Potter's dress was so subtle you couldn't really appreciate it except up close. I managed to photograph most of the costumes. I think I only missed a few. There was a long line of people waiting to be photographed with the Rose Queen. I managed to sneak up to the front and get a few pictures of her young attendants, who are very cute. And I managed to get some pretty decent shots of the Rose Queen herself. This was my favorite picture. We skipped the arts and crafts fair and opted to go back to the motel to rest. Then it was off to Stanley's for one of the best barbecue dinners I've had in a long time. It was super crowded with a big long line, but they had a room ready for us. It looked like a happening place with a bar in the back and lots more seating. We didn't stick around for the band. It was Sunday, we had church on the bus. It was very nice. It was a fun trip, and Making Memories Tour Company did a great job. 
But of course, there's no place like home.